Welcome to the Founders Forum podcast, brought to you by the Foxwell Founders, where we interview some of the hottest minds in D2C right now and deep dive on their area of expertise. Everyone that we interview here is a cherished member of our Foxwell Founders community of over 550 advertisers worldwide and are at the cutting edge of what is working right now. I hope you enjoy this, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Andrew at Foxwell Digital. And now let's get stuck into this week's episode. Here are Edwin and Tris, our hosts. Three best ways that we've ever seen to deal with this is it's one of the things that's working really, really well for our agency right now. Question of the week, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to spill all the tea on TikTok for us. What is the oh wow strategy of the if it's moment? It's working. If it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. <laughs> Who buys it even at that time, right? Hey guys, welcome. This is uh, episode 30 number 30 of the uh, Foxwell Founders podcast. And today we have uh, the president of Acvertise, Agvila Di Fazio. Beautiful name. But the, uh, I think the, the, what's even more impressive is I think that you know, over the last 10 years of working with agencies and businesses across the world, Agvila has spent half a billion dollars on, on ads. So if it's worth knowing, she knows it. Um, yeah, listen, Edwin, take us off. What's the first question? So Agvila, you are AI, 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 so I'm going to ask you the question that I think about sometimes when I walk my dog. Is AI going to replace media buyers? Is this true or false? I'm naturally an optimistic person, so I feel like I need to be a realist too. But I hope that in our lifetime, it doesn't replace us. I don't think it will. It's going to just enhance our workflow, give us the ability to do more with less. Um, you know, I think this is just the beginning and the AI has been around for a long time, but I feel like we're starting to get a sense of like what the capabilities are, where this might go forward. But I have a hard time believing it's going to replace human creativity, cultural nuances. Like it's, it doesn't do that yet. And I hope it doesn't do that for a long time. I like my line of work. I think you guys do too, but I don't think it will fully replace us. It will just complement us in different ways and we'll have to adapt. You use it every day what tools have you found that actually make a real difference in your day-to-day? Great question. Um, I'm always playing with tools, but since last year, just really diving into it and seeing, like, I don't want to be left behind. Um, Jasper.ai, I know there's a chat GPT, but I feel like it has more nuance and it helps me with everything from refining content to creating it. Um, anything from ad copy to landing page copy to making my summaries for client reports much more concise or a little bit more, um, I hate to use the word embellished, but sometimes it reminds me of words that I I don't use as frequently or have gotten out of practice of using. So I feel like in return, it's also improving my actual like communication skills because I'm starting to implement a lot of words because it is very adjective and heavy, but Jasper. And then when it comes to reporting, I use rose.com and then Noah Fair from the group. He actually introduced me to, uh, it's called Julius AI. So I'm starting to play with that as of the last couple of days. So nothing to report yet, but yeah. So reporting AI, um, rose.com isn't an AI specific tool, but I found it to be really useful in importing data from anywhere. Um, It's starting to have, uh, you can sync it now up with Google ads, um, Google analytics, you can import other things from meta. So what I'm doing with that is kind of cleaning up my reports. It's like Excel on steroids in a sense, but it does have AI features built in. So you can ask its AI questions about your data. And while data analysis is part of our jobs, I don't do it 100% of my day. I'm not a data analyst. So I do find that once in a while, it'll find interesting things about my data that will inform me to maybe do something different with their campaigns or maybe just other ideas for other marketing or advertising things that I could recommend to clients. And it also impresses them and gives them other insight too. It's not super robust yet, but I feel like it has picked out a few things or I can do simple tasks. Like, you know, I have a huge spreadsheet. I'm like, which, which of these ads um, spent this much or maybe has a ROAS of like 2.7 or higher or whatever it might be like simple questions like that. It saves me a lot of time, you know, formatting my reports and I can do it much quicker on there. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to play Mm -hmm. this other Julius tool because it does look like it has more AI abilities. But those two things, in addition to um, some 
research tools and some, I'm starting to play with a creative AI, but it hasn't quite gotten there for me yet. But I'm always trying to find other ways because I'm a very small agency and intentionally so. It's just me, uh, one other person and a few contractors. So I try to be as efficient as possible without sacrificing my business or my clients' results. So, mm. but mm. long story long, I feel like I rambled because there's just so much going through my head of like, okay, there's all these different tools I play with, but which ones are the most impactful? So yeah. Jasper and Rose yeah. right now are like really cutting down how much time I need to do account management and it can actually provide other types of insight and services to our clients. I was going to ask that. I mean, the the chat GPT came on the stage about two years ago, a year and a bit ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone was like, look, this is going to take our jobs. It's going to take over and we're going to, everyone's moving to chat GPT. You can plug it into Google. You can plug it into this. Okay, right. Let's cut the crap. What, what are we using from a media buying standpoint that's helping AI? Is there anything that is helping, you know, move it, move the needle when it comes to CS reporting and telling people about it. But is there anything helping you make decisions? It sounds like Julius is a start. Uh, but yeah. Are there other ones or anything, anything similar to that? Uh, just rose.com and then Julius, I just mm. learned about last week. So I'm starting to play with that one as well. Nothing to report back yet, but it's only nice. been a few days. Well, what, what, what does Julius do? Data analysis. Oh, like. Like what, what kind of queries would you drop into it? That I'm still playing around with. Um, I'll report back next time we chat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Noah just shared it with me on Friday. So what, we're, I'm only like three days right. into the work week. Sure. So tell me, tell me just on this, like with, when it comes to like, uh, you know, stepping a bit, a bit away from AI, a bit more into kind of automation, because that's one of the things that people, you know, there's, there's, they, especially when it comes to agency, they're trying to make it a lot more efficient and they want to automate a lot of things. You know, what, what kind of automations have you seen in the last kind of couple of months or have you, have you seen that have been just, they're steadfast of like, these are the automations that are working for us. Uh, you know, is it through ClickUp or anything else like that? I feel like I'm not the right person to answer this question because I'm still fighting with automation and trying to accept it fully. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't use ClickUp. I have other project management tools. Um, I just time track everything and I really just try to refine my processes, but I don't really yeah. automate yet. Anything that's come from automation is more in platform. I'm not using any third party automation tools at the moment. Um, I've I mean, I guess last year I used this company called Weather Ads and with some of my clients, they are very weather specific. So that was an automation I did use where it triggered mm -hmm. based on weather events or temperatures or whatever settings I, I gave it and it transferred over to Meta Ads. Um, but when it comes to actual agency processes, I'm not really automating much yet because I feel like mm. I like having a little bit more control. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you for sure. And look there, I mean, there's ones, I mean, there's certainly ones that we're seeing in our side, like we've got, you know, you got your click ups that, that you know, if, or the other automate other project management tools, but it's like, if you're moving from one stage to another, it passes over to somewhere else. Um, do you use anything like mid journey, uh, for creative yes. or is kind of, uh, how have we found that? Uh, nothing published for clients yet. I'm still playing with it, tweaking it around. I have found that ChatGPT Plus with the uh, Canva plugin has been much more fruitful for me personally, just because it does save me a lot of time browsing templates and I can just tell ChatGPT what to do exactly with that. Um, Mid-journey. I like playing with it. Wait, wait, wait ChatGPT with Canva, what, what are you doing with it? Because, so, yeah, tell, tell me like, well, like an actual application that, that you're doing with it. Sure. More so for my business, not for clients yet, just because okay. they have a lot of great in-house design teams or photographers or videographers. So I'm not providing those services. I don't have a creative shop, but I do want to provide that as a service someday, hopefully using AI to where if I have a client at a pinch, I need to launch something sooner that I can provide something of quality and on brand for them. So I really want to get there with those tools so I can do that for my own business and not out, outsources or, you know, rely on, on a, um, client teams. But for Canva with uh, chat GPT, I'm making images for different work assets that I need for social, for presentations, for, um, you know, examples for clients of what I have a visual idea of what I want them to do, but kind of refine a little bit more with their skills. So it does save me a lot of time instead of just browsing Canva and trying to find the thing that I have in my head because I do have an artistic background and outside of work, I am an artist. So I have all these ideas, but I don't have the tools or the skills to do it yet. So for now, 
that plugin has helped me be a little bit more efficient into getting that idea out, at least in some first draft form, or if it's something for my business, like a social post. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And so just like that's obviously a massive one that, you know, it takes that step of where you, you weren't, didn't have the tools or ability to be able to go and do it. That's yeah. like, that was a big promise that, that ChatGPT made to us and it's delivering, right? It's hitting mm -hmm. the goal, it's, it's working out. Have you, you probably tested a couple AI tools where you're like, nah, that's crap. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen a few kind of run by the wayside. <laughs> so there's one that I really want to love. Um, I don't know if there's just the my prompts aren't up to par with what it needs, but there's runway, which is like mid journey for video. Oh, yeah. But anytime I put something in there, like a client asset, eyes just like, like it's like the pupil kind of migrates over the eyelid and then fingers just intertwine, <laughs> especially if there's hands touching, oh, like no, it's not there yet. No, nice. um, yeah. I'd love for that to get there, but I just also learned about another tool called Creatify. So I'm playing with that. That makes mm -hmm. um, videos using AI and those look really cool. So all you have to do is plug in your domain and it pulls whatever you want from your site or a landing page and can make a video based on that. You can adjust if you want it to talk about specific value props or make it kind of salesy. Um, I haven't put anything out in the wild yet, but that is also uh, Noah's recommendation to me as of Friday. So I'm going to look more into sure. that and let you guys sure. know. It's something actually our creative team is starting, not, not video, but uh, the Canva thing you were talking about earlier on, we're starting to do a lot more with that, uh, with some of our, our social creative um, for some of our clients. And it's it's seeing we're seeing some really good effects when it comes to, um, you know, getting what would would be stock imagery to try and find the perfect stock imagery. Mm -hmm. We're still starting to find some really good kind of le levels of that, especially when it comes to mid journey. If you can upload your um, if you upload a picture of the product or whatever it is, yeah. upload that into mid journey first and allow it to use that product with the prompt that you've got in there, because yeah. the, a lot of the times it, you put it up and as you say, the hands has six fingers or whatever it may be, you know, is it, you're talking about a bloke and it's, it's it, it, like, it's not, not a guy or, you know, it's a guy holding the face cream. It's like, well, I wasn't looking for that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's a little bit of a, a difference. You got to allow it to do its thing, but set its parameters. But we're, yeah, we're seeing some, um, interestingly enough, we got some reports back early last week of, uh, of some really good performance from AI creative just based on, on, you know, it's new creative. It's, it's under the bucket of AI, but it isn't necessarily performing because it's AI, but it's performing better than actual creative at the moment for us and some clients. So it's really Great. exciting to see. Really so, to see. so you're using AI primarily in your workflow, right? And so yes. like, and you keep track of a lot of things. So, so minute for minute, how much has it actually saved you? Like, oh. because, Tell, tell I'm so glad you asked. Was. <laughs> um, that wasn't in our questions, but um, I actually did two case studies. So last year, I like, went fully in Q3 for everything AI in meta, but also uh, you know everything from like ASC to Advantage Plus audiences um, to just leaning into what meta's abilities are and right. you know added you know dynamic copy, having them populate some of that, but also in addition to the tools that I'm using outside of meta. So for one client, e-commerce, um, I had a graph of like, you know, if you can guess when I started implementing AI and there was like a huge drop come August and it's just been pretty consistently lower. So for this one client, we're spending 50K a month e-commerce um, and implemented ASC, implemented Vantage Plus audiences with a suggestion of an in-platform audience like engagers, um, yeah. plus the tools that I'm using. So Jasper, Rose, um, using what else for that one yeah it was just those ones so by doing that i lowered my time managing their account by 33 percent. so meaning i could provide other services to them, do some other higher level strategy take on more platforms for them i could also take on more consulting clients and training clients which i have a lot since then because i have more time now so i haven't sacrificed performance and all of their metrics are up beating prior results. So I'm like, okay, like the platform's kind of figure out what it's doing better with AI with that streamlined approach and a lot of testing, but it's also opened up a lot more time for me there. And then the mm -hmm. second one is a smaller client. I just wanted to show kind of like a larger and smaller one for um, two conferences I spoke at. And for that one, it, they're only spending about 10 K a month and it's for lead gen. So not as much as I have to do for an e-commerce client, but for that one, my time reduced is 17% month over month. So I'm like, okay, great. I have more time again. So 
that Love makes that. it good for somebody at least a business of my size where I need to be small and nimble and also deliver for my clients, but without sacrificing anything. Makes sense. That's, that's, that's what just leaning into all the AI products that Meta has has put out and then implementing and then leaning into Jasper and Rose mm -hmm. um, for the the captions and, and the data data reporting basically. And also creating reporting summaries to my clients, because usually that takes me a lot of time and I still do weekly reporting for these clients. So that was a huge time saver on the reporting end. But also I really get into the creative weeds when I start writing copy and then go into landing page copy, even though that's not part of my job. But I'm really I really like to be part of that just because I get somebody to your site doesn't mean that, you know, the end of the journey is there. So I really try to like provide more of that to clients and it's been able I've been able to do more with less um, mm -hmm. for them so the copy and the reporting front is where most of the time has been saved for me to manage their accounts love that love that have you worked with anything that is uh, you know specific on the media buying side other than this new one now that you're talking about but anything on the mm -hmm. you know that helps you make decisions help you like identify certain places that you know that you can see some some efficiencies within the media buying or in, indeed in, ter in terms of the ideation when it comes to marketing or kind of new ideas is there anything that you've worked from an ai standpoint there it's ai is only a year old so a year or so old when it comes to chat gpt years but like is there anything that you've seen from that that, that standpoint that's really kind of helped you i feel like i just talk to the robots a lot <laughs> 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 just asking questions and trying to figure out like how do i get the answers that i need or to where we're we're hitting a point where this you know the conversation is going in a certain direction mm. to give me the insights that i need so mostly just chat gtp chat gtp or oh my goodness too many letters chat <laughs> gpt <laughs> jasper and rose um i'm also mm. playing with other tools too but i feel like those three are just my go-to i don't go a day without using them even if it's for yeah. a quick question or if it's something where i'm like developing strategy or i'm like you know i want to do this but how do i get from this point to that point um it's not great but it does give me ideas as i'm thinking of how do i communicate this to the machine mm -hmm. And what do I get back yeah. and how can I refine that going forward? So a lot of trial and error. Um, I think it's still in its yeah. infancy, but those are giving me some insights to where they might not give me the answer that I'm looking for, but it gives me another idea based on the response of like, oh, well, maybe I didn't think about it that way. Um, yeah. yeah, makes a lot of sense, right? And it's funny, the, the people who I found have worked best with uh, AI bots and able to talk to bots, they're able to elevate what i call delegate and elevate so it's taking that time to delegate that thought process to a like either a person or a uh, an ai bot that will allow you to take that step up and think about something yeah. a little bit bigger yeah um and so how are you are you you're saying you're, you're with your kind of your operation you're finding that uh you're so you're at the moment you've got a couple of freelancers you've got yourself and you're kind of organizing that mm -hmm. um are you finding that maybe not through ai but are there any kind of tips that you would give to people who are starting to take that step from becoming a freelancer into a uh, into somebody who's hiring their first person or hiring their first uh, media buyer? Yes, great question. Um, document everything, your processes, and, you know, have AI refine a little bit. Um, one, one thing I did want to say that within Jasper, there's you can highlight the content that you want and have it improve the writing. So it makes it a little bit more mm. concise. Um, so I've taken all the documents that I've had. So anytime I do have a contractor and I'm like, Here's the way that I like things done, like open to other suggestions by all means. But, you know, here's what is expected. Um, and I just have it refine those documents. And I've been tweaking them over the years, but it saved me a lot of time to get it to a point where it's understandable by other people that I work with and other partners of like, here's what we're looking for. And I save that. And then, you know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. But if there's some changes on the platform or some changes in business processes, I can just go back in quickly and tweak them. Mm, love that. So love that. Can I can I ask? Like, you've spent so much money over the last ten years. Your small shop, or you you describe yourself as a small shop. I don't know how small it is. Um, how many accounts? How many accounts per head? Like, how many accounts do you guys put per head in in your? So shop? I'm intentionally very small. <laughs> okay, um, right. I like to manage campaigns and not so much people. And the people have told me that I I am a good manager. But it's okay. just uh, there's two of us and then some contractors to fill in some other spaces for my business. But I'm the only one managing the accounts. 
Um, since 2020, things have changed, you know, everywhere in the world, but also I became a parent and, you know, I was no remote and nomadic for a while, but um, I really leaned into another part of my business that I didn't know I enjoyed doing and could provide more services for, and that's for consulting and training. So I train other agencies that have green staff. Um, I train business owners. I train freelancers. So I've, I still manage right now I'm managing like nine accounts, but I have, I feel like my business went from about 90% account management to about maybe 30% account management now. And the rest is just consulting and training and, you know, occasional audits here and there, but um, I found it to be much more lucrative and I'm still in the trenches doing all the work, but for a lot of these other brands, because of whatever reasons, the economy or, you know, mm. they're looking to save some money, but at the end of the day, I'm spending less time and making more money by just training people. So I've put together documents and this is where AI has really helped me to where, how do I explain something in layman's terms to somebody that might not be as experienced when they're working certain platforms? Like what are the caveats? You know, I might know that, you know, all of us, we work in it and we know that like, okay, well, this sounds like it would work well in theory, but does it actually work well in execution? So mm. I've put together documentation where I can share that with clients to, you know, maximize my earnings, but give them exactly the tools that they need to get them to the next step. And then I just help them step over step until maybe they get big enough and they want to hire me to manage it or whatever the road looks like. But um yeah, I'm very small, so I really try to dial in everything I have uh, to not have to go back and rewrite something if I don't have to reinvent it every single time. Love that, love that. And so with those, with those kind of this SOPs or operating procedures that you're kind of giving those people, you know, that that obviously changes over time. But I mean, for, for the vast majority of people, it's document everything, make sure it's really clear. Would you say there's anything that, that, that you know, you were the first time you wrote an SOP? Was it like, oh, it's probably so long ago at this day. Is there any kind of key tips? Like, yes, you document everything. Are you saying record it, maybe screen record yourself and then write that down? Or what are you thinking? I keep thinking about that because a lot of people in the in the membership do talk about just doing uh, looms. I haven't mm. done that yet. Um, but I do. I just like to hop on a call with a client and I do record those calls. But mm. each client is different and... I don't, yeah. maybe I could refine that process a little bit more, but I feel like that's a really big thing that clients come back to me and say, like, I just love our one-on-one connection and that this is why we want to keep working with you because we trust you and you're transparent. And I feel like I, I do have like a, a warmer connection with people. So I don't mind it. Like, I think I, I take it as like, you know, I, I don't have that really refined, but I think it's a good selling point that clients don't feel like, oh, I'm on my own. I'm just watching a video and that might work well with somebody's workflow. But I feel like for my business, like it is just me in a way that I need yeah. to still be a part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And look, I mean, that's that's exactly it. It's, it's people buy, buy from people. Right. So you, you're you, your personality is what's selling. Yeah, for sure. Um, you spoke there about. Oh, go on. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, I did. I Sorry. I just wanted to add one thing. It popped up when I think Edwin Edwin last the last question. Um, about another thing with AI that I use prompt oh, yeah. generators. So in Jasper, one thing that really saves me a ton of time is in their chat feature, um, there is a pr advanced prompt generator. So I could put something like, write me a piece, you know, two sentence piece of copy for a pair of shoes that I'm trying to sell. I can just put something that broad in there and it knows that I'm an advertiser and like I've done all these things already in the platform. And it'll give me like a paragraph of this beautifully written, super detailed prompt. And that helps me do things a lot faster if I have to take something and plug it into a different tool to give me a better prompt. Um, Triple Whale also has a free e-commerce prompt generator tool thing. There's a very, it's, it's a very long name. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's free, not just for e-commerce, but you can pick different marketing assets that you want. And it, you just pick in a few fields and it'll generate a prompt for you as well. I think it's using, um, you know, open AI, but those two have saved me a lot of time if I'm looking to just get an idea out, but I need more details and it does the work for me. Love that. That's amazing. And that, like, that's the thing, right? That's that finding that efficiency that takes that next step for you, not just yourself, but any, any agency. I know yeah. our agency would love something like that. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. AI for AI. 
Yeah, well, Sorry, this is it, right? Yeah. No, no, I was going to say AI is, is exactly it. It's AI-ception. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sorry, what I was trying to say to you there was that you mentioned a bit about uh, the Foxwell Founders Group, and it's it's you know it's something that you obviously take a huge uh, huge leap in uh, yourself with uh, with managing that community. Uh, I mean, can you talk to us a bit a bit more about about that specifically? You know, what how do you find it? Like, is it something that you use on a day to day basis? Is it something you find value in? Just love to hear a bit more about that from you. Yes, especially as a small uh, business owner, I feel like having the the membership gives me a larger team because any time before that, if I run into an issue with my business or an account or, you know, just client relations, I'd go to Twitter and it's like, I'm just going to put this out there or just keep it to myself, depending on, you know, what the nature of the contact context is or what the issue is. But I feel like mm -hmm. with founders, I can be a little bit more uh, candid about mm -hmm. what's going on. And I feel like in a way, like it, it just feels safer. Um, yeah. You know, you never yeah. know who's lo looking on Twitter. Like, granted, I don't know all 400 plus people in the group, but I feel like just the vibe of the entire community is just helpful. And I can post things and they're like, hey, like, I don't know, I lost a client or like, hey, I'm running into this issue. And within usually in a couple of minutes, somebody always responds to a question that I post or, you know, a challenge that I have where on Twitter, like I may or may not get a response or, you know, how, how deep do people want to get? We're here. Mm. I can get solutions much faster and in a much more tailored way. And I feel like it's just a solid group of intellectual people that do the same work. And I don't feel as alone working yeah. remotely that if I run into something or if I just want camaraderie, like I've made some really good friends here that I hang out with outside of work. And, you know, it's just a really great community. I love it. Love that. Love that. And absolutely. I agree with you. Yeah, 100 percent. It's something that we see a lot of value in. It's, I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have met Edwin without this group and certainly I certainly haven't built the relationships that I've built with some of the, the other agency owners and actually some clients as well, uh, specifically from this group. So, yeah, it's been it's been inspirational for us as well. All right, guys, that has been episode 30 of the Foxwell Founders podcast. We learned all about the AI tools that are helping us right now. How do you save 33 percent of your time? We told you, we covered it. I'm Edwin. I'm Tris. I'm Akvila. Until the next time. <laughs>